But to me, Reservoir brings back some very fond memories. This is a kid. Um, when I fa pa first passed my driving test, obviously my, one of my main haunts was going down to the Witham and places like that. But to actually come back here, um, as soon as I passed my test, this was the place I used to come with one of my best mates, Greg Owen. And we just loved it. And uh, to be stood here 25 years later on, uh, the venue's changed quite a bit really, to be honest with you. And I'm really looking forward to the day. Um, it's always been a notorious bream water, a large head of carp in it. I think there's been a bit of a stocking programme as well over the past, you know, however long, two decades. Uh, so it's got a bit of everything. I remember when I was a kid, when I used to come here as a teenager, I always used to catch some really nice tench as well. It's just a fantastic venue and it's split between a railway line and on the other side, the Swanwick side, which is a little bit shallower. That was where we always used to go in the summertime, but obviously we're just coming into the spring now. The high bank, these are the, used to be the old 60 pegs. Nice bit of deep water, reasonably deep water in comparison to the rest of the res. It just looks so fishy. Nice, bright, sunny day. But however, there's a wind on. Not ideal bream conditions, but with that wind on, I think uh, I'll be very surprised if I don't catch. So I'm really looking forward to it. Here we go. The first bite of the day. Definitely a bream and a very welcome surprise on the third cast. To be honest with you, I thought it'd taken maybe a little bit longer to get my bite. Maybe a bit more time to build up the swim and get fish competing and interested in the feed. As I say, three casts in and uh, I'm into one, which is great news. Look at that, what a fish. Happy days. Just take the hook out of him. Look at that, right in the bottom lip. Literally pick that bait up, lift it off the bottom and that's what's hooked it. Let's take the hook out. Look at that for a beautiful butterly reservoir bream. Only about two and a half, three pound, but wow. 25 years since I've seen you. <laughs> Slipping back. Right, let's talk about bait prep. Now, <coughs> as with all my fishing, I try to keep things as simple as possible, but logical at the same time. So we've figured out that it's a carp venue, gets fed with particle baits. Pellets are a big bait on here, as they are with a lot of bream waters nowadays. I'm gonna keep it simple. That's all I'm on to feed. That's all I wanna put around my method feeder. So let's talk about the bait prep. 
very very simple now if you're going to do it on the bank make sure as soon as you get to your peg before you get anything ready always do your bait wherever you go do your bait first give it time to rest absorb all the moisture and by the time you've got everything else ready your bait will be bang on it's so important to get your bait right without your bait working right you're going to affect your catch rate and the fish that you catch so let's talk about bait so i like to mix really i like um my favorite especially with waters like this where i'm targeting bream and carp on natural waters green swim sim three mils i absolutely love them at my local venue Woosborough swear by these and i'm convinced in my head that these alone catch me a lot more fish than other other baits other size baits so the three mils are, are very important to me so i want to do equal quantities of dynamite green swim stim three mils and xl two mils very good quality pellets low oil but they don't lose the shape and that's really important so when we're uh put, preparing the pellets like what we are today for the hybrid feed i want them soft and spongy i want them a good quality pellet so when they're spongy and i'm uh, uh, pressing them into the feeder they're going to expand out and remain on the bottom on the lake as whole individual pellet pellets they're not going to break down as quick so that's really important so let me just quickly show you how i do them very very simple so i'm just put equal quantities of two mils and three mils in the same tub now what you've got to remember with pellets is they swell and it's amazing how much bait you can get just out of a pint of pellets how long it lasts for i've prepared today just over a pint of pellets i mostly end up throwing half of them away you know because they really do swell up so don't do too much you don't need that much when you're just fishing a method feeder so i've mixed the green three mils and the two mils together you can see there now what i also like to add is this swim stim pellet so to me i like green pellet um why i don't know i just think it helps my hook bait stand out a little bit more and i'm confident with it and i think bait a bait that you're confident with is a, is a massive advantage in your head you sat there knowing that your approach your bait's right your approach is right and if this fish there you're going to get a bite that's half the battle so all i like to do is just a reasonable helping of the pellet soak let's say three or four tablespoonfuls there let's say mix that up now you don't actually see the advantage of this until you've added the water and you're given time for those pellets to absorb all that moisture with the pellet soak and they'll end up turning green so now what I'm going to do is, let me just move up the bank of it so I can show you properly. All I'm going to do now is add enough water. And this is the same whether you're mixing a pint of pellets, two pints, three pints, whatever you're mixing, the same principle applies, which is add water until you can just see the level of the water underneath the pellets, like so. So if I just flatten those pellets down, you can just see the water glistening underneath now that's really important getting the right amount of water for your pellets ensures that you end up with really nice soft spongy pellets but not too soft add too much water they absorb too much moisture and then they'll start to break down i want them soft and spongy so i can compress them in the feeder and they'll expand back out on the bottom on the late bed so all i'm going to do is i'm going to press them down now once i've got the water level right leave them for half an hour and they're ready it's as simple as that really really simple another good way especially like today a nice bright sunny day i don't want the sun to get to them so if i want to kind of like achieve consistent pellets throughout the tub throw away the excess water press down with the other lid like that just leave them and they'll be and as i say in 25 minutes half an hour they'll be absolutely perfect as i've said earlier as well hook bait choices i want to keep things simple i know that these hook baits work i'm confident with them so today i've been mainly concentrating on the speedy dynamite speedy washers 
both 7 mil because that blends with the hook size that I'm using, which is a, a 14 hook. I may catch a carp, I want to hook a carp and land it, so I want to use a big hook. As a result, I'm using a big bait. And the, the bream, even the bream, are so used to feeding on big boilies, as I've explained from the carp lads feeding the, the lake with boilies and big particle baits, they'll quite happily take a 7mm uh, speedy washer. Yellow and pink, they're my favourite colours. I love brown, but today, by far, the 7mm has stood out from the rest. So, they're, they're, they've been my bait options today. So, that's it. Really, really nice, simple bait preparation there and it works. When I was a youngster coming here all I used to bring was red ground bait, worms and maggots but as times have changed natural venues like where we are today at Butterley Reservoir have become so dependent on fish meal baits. From ground baits to particle baits, it attracts and selects the better fish in the reservoir. And it's proving the point today. Now this is a better fish actually, this feels a very good fish. Not a carp, but just a better stamp bream. Condition of these fish, really dark bronze bream could hook bait right in the corner of its lip. Like peas in a pod they are, but in fantastic condition. And that's just simply because of what we feed them and the natural food source as well. These reservoirs, they're full of bloodworm. And bloodworm is such a rich source of protein for the fish which results in very well primed conditioned fish such as these just hopefully it'll behave for us look at that beautiful he's a lively one aren't you hey eh? calm down i'll put you back in a sec look at that fantastic right let's slip him back Right, let's talk about the setup. Now, it's amazing how times have changed over the past two decades, I'd say. Let's take, for example, this reservoir. Years ago when I used to come here, my favorite ground bait was uh, Expo, Van der Nijn Expo. Red Expo, maggots, worms, through a feeder, fishing a long hook length, catching bream, tench. Whereas now, Still catching the same fish, but the approach is so advanced. And that is simply because the fish feed differently on the bait. Now they're fed with, like what I said earlier, particle baits from the carp lads, boilies, pellets, sweet corn, hemp, in large amounts. And so the approach, is, the approach now is, is reflecting upon how the fish are fed nowadays. So years ago, an open end feeder, long tail, caught a lot of fish. Now, the method feeder is as good and sometimes more effective. You'll still catch on an open end feeder with a long tail, but this is a fantastic way of catching bream on natural waters across the country. There's many waters that have been completely transformed from the specimen carp lads feeding particle baits. The fish get bigger, and they get used to feeding on a table of bait. And that's exactly what we're trying to achieve today. A lot of our styles of feed, uh, fishing, whether it's pole fishing and feeder fishing, is based around the method feeder. The whole principle is we are trying to get the fish to feed over a small carpet of bait, and hopefully they'll take your hook bait. And that's what a method feeder is all about. So let me talk about the setup quickly. Now, like what I've said to you, now I know what baits the fish get fed on here and a little bit of background knowledge if you go into a water such as this finding out are there any carp in it if there's carp in it then it's going to be a pellet and a boily approach 
So the setup for me is really simple. I know I'm going to fish a method feeder. I've had a spent a bit of time this morning just plumbing up, finding the depths, finding the contours. We're coming into spring. I don't want to be in 10 foot of water. I want to be in eight, seven foot of water where the water's a little bit warmer. As a, as a, as a spring draws on, the sun's warming up that water faster. So the fish will actually want to be in that shallower water. So I've set up one rod, keeping things simple. I don't want to complicate things. I'm confident that I know that a method feed is the right approach. So that's all I've set up. So first of all, I've set up a 13 foot Shimano, 13 foot distance feeder rod. Fantastic tool, covers me for all the options from fishing 40 meters right out to 100 meters plus. Nice soft action as well, which is really important, especially when you're targeting bream. Look, we could get a carp today, but bream are the quarry. They're the main species we're going to be targeting today. So I want a nice soft action rod to compensate for when they're bumping about as I'm bringing them in, I'm going to prevent hook pulls. But yeah, it's got plenty of power in the butt. That's for casting, aiding accuracy, especially with a crosswind like today. I want to be dead accurate. I want to build up that bait in a really nice tight area right down to the reel now. I'm using a Shimano XSC 5500, a really, really light reel, ultra light, which helps balancing the rod, especially when you're fishing a long rod like this. And also, I'm uh, using Shimano X-Age 018 mainline to 025 shock leader. Now I need a shock leader for two reasons, it gives, gives me confidence and when I'm punching a feeder out, if the wind was to pick up, then it allows me to still hit the clip at the distance that I'm fishing. I'm fishing, I'm not fishing really far out, I'm fishing 67 meters today. Just going up the shelf into the shallow water, but by using a shot leader, it gives me that confidence knowing that I can hit that clip no matter what the conditions are or how they change. And then obviously a thinner main line, and that's really important. That is minimizing resistance on the cast. And it's also, which is really important, creating a really nice tight line. So as my feeder goes through the air and I hit the clip, the line is really straight because it's a thinner line. So the wind is finding it harder to grab hold of the line, which means I'm keeping a straighter line and being more accurate. If I were to use a thicker main line for this style of fishing, it may cause a few problems when I hit the clip. It may cause a big bow in my line. You're hitting your clip and you're not actually fishing the distance that you think you are. So that's the setup, really nice setup. And generally with my shock leader, I have the length of the shock leader from the knot on, just onto the spool, up the rod, back down to the butt. That's my measuring system. And that's just enough to ensure that when I'm playing a fish, I've got the knot of the shock leader on my spool as I net that fish. Now, down to the terminal tackle at the bottom. So I'm using, uh, maybe in the summertime I'd swap to a large hybrid feeder, but I'm using a medium. Still get quite a lot of bait on. Um, I'm using it in uh, a 42 gram, but I've added extra lead. So if you look there, I've just glued a bit of lead on the bottom. That aids two things really. It aids versatility for distance, and it also aids casting ability. So, it means that the feeder will fly straighter through the air and also it's protecting the base of that feeder, preventing any volumes of water shooting up as that feeder hits the surface and may push excess bait out of the feeder on the cast. Just makes you casting far more easier with that lead on the bottom. Um, now I've got a four inch up length, 018. Now I don't want to mess about here. Look, the principle is the bait is on the bottom, the fish are coming up, they're feeding on the particles, and hopefully it'll pick up our hook bait. I want to keep things simple, but I want to keep things logical as well, because we may actually hook a carp. I don't want to fish too fine. So I'm using a 14 hook to 018, Shimano Aspire Silk Shot 018, 018 line, four inch hook length, and I'm using one of my speedy washers. Now, I've gone through uh, two or three colors today, Yellow's been the best colour by far, and I think that stems from the clarity of the water. The water's really clear, as you can see. And uh, also, I'm under the impression because it's a bream water and the carp water, a lot of the fish are so used to sweet corn. So, what better colour than using a nice bright yellow speedy washer 7mm 
on a spike. So that's it, a really nice simple setup, but very effective. Another beautiful butterly bream on the end. In all honesty, I can't think of anywhere better to be today than here. Fantastic fishing, beautiful venue. Lovely cold wind straight in my face. However, it's still great. And I'm sure there's a few more fish to be had as the day progresses. You can just tell that the peg's just getting stronger and stronger as we're building the peg up with bait. And I'm sure very soon we'll be catching one of these beauties nearly every cast. And for spring, and the water's still cold and the water's very clear, it's great. Absolutely loving it. taking my time got a nice big hook on but there's no point in rushing it enjoy the moment here he comes there's beauty about the water being so clear you can see him coming through the water quite a distance away there we go look at that for a beautiful fish In the bag. There we go. Look at that. Again, right in the bottom lip. He's taken my bait as well. Naughty fish. Beautiful condition bream these. And that's simply because of the habitat that they're in and the food that they get very happy fish right let's talk about loading of the feeder now to me it's really important and with uh, the setup that i'm using i'm using a hybrid feeder as i've already mentioned but i'm using an elasticated feeder obviously because i'm fishing at a reasonable distance i want that elastic to aid as a cushion especially for skimmers it's going to prevent any hook pulls on the return now, hi, 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 we've got one. Now, the beauty about this situation is while I'm fishing, and I was just about to do it, I can load up my feeder ready for the next cast. So when I'm in a situation like what, in a match, you want to get back in that water as quickly as possible, it aids you to be all ready, prepared, feeder loaded, for you to change your feeder. And that's the beauty about the XA stem with Guru. It means you can instantly land a fish, unhook the fish, put it in your net, or return the fish, load, uh, clip another feeder back on, and you're back out within seconds. That's the advantage. So let me just quickly land this fish, and I'll uh, run through the process of the loading of the feeder and the casting. Now, the loading of the feeder is really, really important. Getting it right, where you put your hook bait, the pressure that you apply to your pellets in your feeder is dictated by how long it takes for those pellets to come out of the feeder whilst you're fishing. And in a situation like now where I'm catching a lot of fish, I want my hook bait to actually come out of the feeder reasonably quickly. So they're kind of like in a way, I, I want to force the fish to take my hook bait before they start feeding on the particles that are coming off the feeder. So there are little ways of actually catching fish quicker with the method. There's no, you know, obviously there's different ways of loading a feeder up depending on the situation. That's what I want to show you. So let me just quickly land this beautiful fish. Look at that. Fantastic. Right in the bottom lip again. And just return him. So, loading the feeder, I am putting a big base in, which ensures that my hook bait's not going to get lodged inside the feeder and it's going to fall off the side of the feeder very quickly when, once it hits the bottom. So virtually level, I'm putting the pellets level with the feeder. And then rather than actually pushing my hook bait in, 
I'm laying my hook bait on the surface. Okay, just literally like that. And then I'm gonna give it a good mound on the surface. Now that to me is my protection layer. I'm convinced that the protection layer, the majority of it comes off on the surface, yet the hook bait will still remain on the top of the feeder. So that is kind of like just a, a safety blanket for the, for the hook bait to ensure that the hook bait's not popping out as it's falling through the water, as you can see. But literally just under those pellets there, you can see my hook bait. That's exactly what I want to happen. Those hook pellets, a lot of them may be removed on the surface and my hook bait then is visible straight away for the fish to pick out. That's the loading of the feeder in this situation. If I want to leave my feeder in for longer and I'm, let's say, earlier on in the day when I'm waiting for those to bring to arrive, I was having 15, 20 minute casts. I was actually putting my hook bait further down. So that meant that it, the feeder was taking longer to push all the bait out, which meant that the hook bait was still remaining around the feeder for a longer period of time. So, nice and simple, all ready to go. So the casting. Now this is an area that I suppose I get a lot of questions asked about really, casting. And it's just one of these things that it takes practice. And once you've got the right tackle, using the right length rods, the reel, for example, this XSC, Shimano XSC, is an absolute workhorse. As you can see, a really nice big spool. That means the line comes off it effortlessly, minimum resistance. That is going to aid your casting no end. So from finding it difficult to be accurate at 70 meters plus, using the right tools really does help with your ability and your accuracy, and in turn, you'll catch loads more fish. So, like what I was explained, I've literally undone a feeder. I've got a nice big loop on there on my shock leader line. Hook the fresh feeder that I've loaded up back on, and I'm ready to cast out. So, the casting action, keep it the same every time. A bit like bow and arrow. Be accurate, look down your rod on the cast. So I've got my marker in front of me. I'm going to be looking at that marker constantly as I'm aiming the rod at that marker and I'm following through with the same action. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of people try to cast. I'm right-handed. It's actually a left hand that is the casting tool. So you're actually, as the butt rises, and you'll see on the cast process, as the butt rises, I'm pulling that butt towards my chest. That is how you're going to get the full compression of the rod. And this is the area that's your accurate accuracy marker. You see people and they try and push forward with the right hand, pull back with your left hand and you'll be far more accurate. So let's get back out there and try and catch another one. So I'm looking down my rod now. I'm looking at my marker. I'd never look behind me. Always look in front. Nice good launch. Hit the clip. So and I've just followed that rod forward as I've hit the clip to cushion the fall of the feeder on the surface. That ensures that the feeder's landing on the base of the feeder on the surface. That's going to minimise the bait coming off it. So I know in the back of my mind now, as I'm fishing for however long, on long casts, you've got to be 100% sure that everything's intact. I'm sitting on, the, my feeder's on the bottom, sitting on the bottom, and it's all intact for those fish to arrive. Well... What a fantastic day's fishing and what a fantastic way of rounding off a memorable day back at Butterloo Res. Look at this fish. I've absolutely loved it. It's given me the itch in all honesty to come back and even pleasure fish it a couple of times, hopefully in the near future, because I've just loved it so much. Catching fish like this. Now that to me is what fishing is about. Nice spring day, fantastic reservoir, catching beautiful fish like this. It cannot get any better than that. Really nice simple approach as well. Simple approach regarding the method feeder and the bait choice and the hook bait choice. Just absolutely loved it, fantastic. I think we better get him back now.